as computers became more sophisticated and more advanced, the banking decided that they were going to have interest compounded continuously. That means every minute, every second, every millisecond. Therefore, we use the EXP, which is the irrational number E, in order to be able to calculate the future value, the present value, and the effective interest rate for this particular situation. So the formulas we're going to use for the future value is the future value is the present value, how much you're investing now, times on the computer, the E is expressed as EXP, open parentheses, the nominal interest rate times the time. The present value is equal to the future value, again, times E, which is expressed as EXP, times negative the R times the T. And the APY, which is the effective interest rate, is equal to the E, which is again expressed as EXP, times the exponent rate, minus 1. So we're going to go through three different problems that uses these particular formulas. Leonard's current salary is $45,000. Ten years from now, how much will he need in order to retain his present purchasing power? If the rate of inflation over that period is 3% per year compounded continuously. So basically, we have to be able to calculate the future value of $45,000 at the nominal interest rate of 3% for the 10 years. So we're going to go to use the future value formula, which says that our present value, the amount that he's earning now, and don't forget you have to put in your equal sign when you create your formula. So it's 45,000 times. You type in the letter EX, and you notice that you have a forms over here, different formulas with EX. We want the EXP. Now that we have that, we go to our nominal interest rate, which is 3%, times the time, which is the 10 years. Close the parentheses. And we get $60,743.65 is what Leonard would have to earn today in order to be able to have the same buying power or purchasing power of $45,000 10 years ago. All right, let's try another one. Having received a large inheritance, May's parents wish to establish a trust for her college education. If seven years from now they need an estimated $70,000, how much should they set aside in trust now if they invest the money at 10%? Now we're going to find two different investments. One, they're getting 10.5% compounded quarterly. The other, they're going to be getting 10.5% compounded continuously. And we want to be able to compare the difference. Now remember, if we invest $70,000 at 10.5% compounded quarterly for seven years. The M is equal to four. The I is equal to the 10.5% divided by four. The N is equal to the four times the seven. We're using the formula that the present value is equal to the future value divided by one plus I to the nth exponent. So we have the $70,000 divided by, open parenthesis, 1 plus the periodic interest rate, exponent button N. And that tells us, changing this to dollars, that in order to have $70,000 in seven years, May's parents would have to invest $33,885.14 if the interest is compounded quarterly. Now let's go to the present value formula, which says we take the future value times the exponent minus the R times the T. In order to calculate the present value if the interest is compounded continuously. So again, we start off with equal. We are taking the $70,000 times, remember we type in EX, and you're going to click on the EXP button, minus the interest rate, which is a 7.5%, times the number of years, which is 7. And that tells us, changing that to money, that if the 10.5% is compounding continuously, 
they would have to invest $33,565.38. And you notice that's a little bit more, less than $300 than if it was compounded quarterly. So it is indeed a savings. The last question we're going to do is we're going to use the effective interest formula for compounding continuously and also compounding semi-annually. We want to invest, compare two investments. Investment A offers a 10% return when the investment is compounded semi-annually at 10% interest, or investment B, which offers a 9 and 75 hundredths percent return, compounded continuously. Which investment has a higher rate of return? So we want to be able to calculate the effective interest rate for both investment A and B. Well, investment A, remember, we're going to use the formulas. We're going to go to financial. We go to effect. And that means we have to put in the nominal rate. Since it's semi-annually, we know that we have the two interest periods per year. Notice we get our return for the formula results on the template. So this is in decimal notation. Using the formula for the effective interest rate for compounding continually, again, we put in the EX, we're using the EXP times the nominal interest rate minus 1. That gives us, and let's put that in as a decimal number, 0 0.012 whatever. And now we want to be able to change this to a percentage. So I'm going to copy each one individually so we can actually see the original decimals. And then we want to change these two into percent notation. We want to expand the number of decimal places, getting this open. And we notice that the effective interest rate for 10% compounded semi-annually is larger than the 9 and 75 hundredths percent compounded continuously. So investment A is the better choice. Now it's your turn to work on continuously compounding interest 